Hey everybody, I'm Shashank at Modular and in this video we'll walk through this tutorial which is how to deploy a model with Amazon SageMaker and AWS CloudFormation templates. Now there are many different ways to deploy models uh, with Amazon SageMaker and host an endpoint. You can use the AWS CLI tool, you can use the Boto3 SDK, you can use the SageMaker SDK, you can also use the console to go through a point and click and do these steps. But the quickest and easiest way is to use CloudFormation templates. In this tutorial, we provide you with a CloudFormation template. And if you're new to AWS, Cloud, AWS CloudFormation is a service that lets you specify all the resources that you want, uh, and it'll automatically go and provision them for you. Specifically in this example, you'll need to do the, uh, you'll need to have a SageMaker model, an endpoint configuration, and also an endpoint, and it'll uh, string all of these together and provision them for you. Now, before we uh, get started with this specific example, I wanna walk you through some of the different ways you can host models on AWS. Uh, you can obviously you, uh, host a model using Amazon EC2. Uh, that's the option that gives you full control of your instances, but you don't get all the automatic features such as scaling and load balancing and all of that. You, in the middle, you can also use Kubernetes and ECS, which give you uh, some control over the data plane, which is your resources but the uh, control plane is fully managed, which means you can get automatic scaling of your workloads. And finally, the fully managed approach, what we'll be seeing in this example is Amazon SageMaker, where not only do you get this ease of use uh, approach to hosting models, but you also get these additional features such as uh, real-time inference, serverless, async, batch, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's head back to our tutorial and uh, we'll walk through all the steps in this tutorial. The first thing we wanna do is log into our AWS console. If you have an account, you should be logged in already. And then you wanna click on this link, which uh, links to a CloudFormation template that will automatically populate this CloudFormation stack for you. Now you'll see here that this is the specific template. It's pulling from Amazon S3. Uh, this is the name of the stack, what type of instance, and so on and so forth. So I'll go ahead and click create stack here at the bottom. And what this does is, first I have to acknowledge that um, I'm uh, granting permissions to create these resources. And then I click create stack. And with what this does is goes and kickstarts this process of creating all these different steps. Now, while this is happening, let me take you to the actual CloudFormation template and show you what's uh, going on. So if you download the template I showed you, you'll see that this is a YAML file. Uh, it has a bunch of resources listed in it. For example, this is the model we want to serve, which is a BERT-based uncaged model. We want to host this on a C5.4x large EC2 instance. Um, there's also permissions that we want to grant. Uh, the ECR permissions to push and pull container images, our serving container, and also the endpoint configuration and the endpoint itself. Now, this is not a very um, user-friendly way to view this. If you have the AWS uh, Visual Studio Code extension installed, you can also visualize this um, as a flowchart here. And if you scroll back, you will see here that I have a few different resources represented by these boxes. On the right, I have a model component. This is a SageMaker model, and I'll show this to you in the console as well as the provisions are being, as the resources are being provisioned. So there's a model, which is your BERT model, there's the endpoint configuration, which specifies uh, the uh, number of instances you want, any scaling policies, as you get more inference requests, maybe you want to scale out to more instances and so on, you specify that here. And the actual endpoint itself, where you manage the traffic, uh, the, the thing that you hit when you access this specific endpoint for uh, getting inference requests. You also have another component here for uh, ECR, which is Elastic Container Registry, which is the, where the serving container is hosted. So this is a quick way to visualize what are the different resources we're provisioning in the CloudFormation stack. Now let's go back to our console. So first thing I'll do is go to the Amazon SageMaker console. And in the Amazon SageMaker console on the left, if you scroll down, you should see a section that says inference okay under inference you'll see a few different boxes and we'll focus on models model endpoint configuration 
and the endpoints themselves. These are the resources being provisioned currently. Okay, let's click on models. Now you'll see here that uh, a model was created right now, and this was created by the CloudFormation uh, stack, by the CloudFormation service, and you'll see that uh, this model was uh, registered here, and this is the Burton case model. Next, further down, you see endpoint configuration, and this has also been provisioned right now, and if you take a look at it, you'll see that there is a model, uh, there are variants, you can have multiple of them, you can do blue-green deployments and so on. So these, uh, this is the endpoint configuration. And finally, the third section here is the endpoint itself. And this endpoint is being created, as you see here. So it's not yet done created. So creating means essentially spinning up that specific instance that we want and then Load, uh, pulling the container image, which is a serving container, the max container image, and then hosting the specific endpoint. Now, while this is being created, we have to wait before we can test the endpoint. The other thing I'll show you is also the Elastic Container Registry. So in the container registry, we see that we have a registry with a, a specific container image that was pulled from the uh, um, our public registry which has a max serving container which will be used to host the model. So at the end point, the model from Amazon uh, S3 will be pulled into this container image and then uh, it'll be optimized using the max engine. And finally, a service will be started up to have access to the uh, specific endpoint. Let's head back to the SageMaker uh, console to the inference section to the endpoints uh, this is still being created so uh, let's wait for this to reach a completed state and then we'll go test our endpoint okay so now that our endpoint is in service and you can see this in the status as a green check mark that means we can start using our endpoint so before I invoke this endpoint I'll also show you that our cloud formation stack that we started also should say completed. And there it is, it says create completed. That means all the resources were provisioned uh, as part of our cloud formation stack. Okay, now time to go invoke this endpoint and test if it is uh, actually working. So back to our Visual Studio code, I have a Jupyter Notebook here, which basically runs the same code that's in the tutorial website. And for your confirmation, if you click on the tutorial and scroll back down, there is a script here uh, that invokes, this is a client code that invokes the endpoint and prints the results. Okay, let's go back. I have this code. It, it has some dependencies on uh, Boto3 transformer, Boto3 for authentication, um, transformers and tot. So you may wanna go and uh, install this ahead of time. And after you do that, you can run this script here. You will notice that here it says endpoint name, uh, your endpoint goes here. So what you wanna do is go back to the uh, endpoint section, copy the name of your endpoint, which is this, this uh, automatically generated name, go ahead and paste it here. Okay, it should look like this. And the rest of the uh, text, uh, the rest of the code has some text here, which goes through the model and you pre-process the output and give the results. So let, let's go run this cell. So essentially what it does is sends that data to the endpoint, invokes it, and gets back the results. So here's the endpoint operating, and uh, you can see the input token and the predicted uh, token right here. Now, you can also take a look, closer look at the endpoint to see stuff like the uh, memory utilization, CPU utilization, traffic, and so on and so forth uh, as well. So uh, that's it for this uh, example. Uh, we walked you through the process of uh, using the CloudFormation st uh, stack to uh, set up the various resources that were required to host a SageMaker endpoint. Um, the last thing you want to do if you don't want to continue using the endpoint, of course, is to clean up. Uh, what happens if you don't clean up? These resources will continue to run in your AWS account and cost you money. So what you want to do is delete all the resources. And if you're using CloudFormation stacks, actually the process uh, becomes a lot easier for you. All you have to do is go to CloudFormation, uh, click on the specific uh, template, the CloudFormation template you want to delete, hit the delete button, it'll ask you to confirm, and you click delete, and it'll initiate the delete process, delete in progress. 
The nice thing about doing it this way, it'll delete all the resources that were provisioned. Uh, whereas if you're doing this manually, you would have to go back and delete all the resources yourself. That's it for the end of this video. Uh, in another video, I'll talk about how to do similar things with uh, Amazon EKS or Amazon uh, Kubernetes service. So until then, thank you for uh, watching this till the end of the video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.